Greetings and welcome to Spiritual Enlightenment. I'm your host, Charles Cochran, and many of you know me as the Celtic Cricket Psychic Reader. Well, today we're going to cover a topic that I've covered before, but it's always fun to get somebody else's input and ideas. We're going to talk today about crystals and crystal healing, and I have a wonderful friend and guest on today. Amanda Babin is with me today. Thank you, Amanda, for coming on today. Hi. We'll be talking about crystals, crystal healing, and uh, your favorite crystals. And, I've got many. And how you use them and why you use them and what you're, what you're drawn to. And speaking of which, I was telling you earlier, when I was a child, uh, we used to go camping at this um, seasonal campground. And there was a little store there where an elderly woman would be selling polished and tumbled stones. I was fascinated. I always wanted a couple of this, a couple of that, different colors. I didn't really know what the stones were for other than that they were cool. I wanted to carry them on me. I wanted to buy more. And of course, my parents were like, just go to the beach and pick some stones up. <laughs> but these were all glossy and shiny and polished and pretty. And I just wanted them. And I think a lot of times, young people are drawn to stones. Well. I've seen flea markets where they have fill a bag for five dollars and I just, I love it because there are so many to pick out and they're all so beautiful. But don't you notice that the kids gravitate towards oh, yeah. them? I think the kids just naturally, they like collecting things, they like sparkly things. But I think that the children too instinctively know what stones and crystals they want to carry. I see it all the time at my shop. Um, kids are drawn to a certain stone. And I tell them the properties of the stone and what it's good for. And usually their parents say, you know what? That's what he needs or that's what she needs. So how long have you been working with stones and crystals? I've been working with stones and crystals for a little while. Um, I, I have been collecting them since I was a kid, as, as a lot of kids do. But um, more recently, I've gotten into learning their meanings, learning what to do with them, and learning how to incorporate them in my everyday life. Yes. Now, we all have favorites. You can't have one favorite stone or crystal. You have to have multiple favorites. It's true. You can't just have one favorite. No, absolutely not. So what is one of um, the crystals or stones that you're gravitating towards a lot of the time? Well, one of my favorite stones to gravitate to is blue gold stone. It's a man-made stone. It's very pretty and sparkly. Oh, it's beautiful. It looks like the night sky. I have some right here. If you have some here, maybe you can hold them up. I know they're small, but keep it flat in the palm of your hand and maybe they can zero in on that. Zoom in on it, I mean. So what are you attracted to about this stone? Well, one of the things it does, it reminds me of the night sky. And I've always liked nighttime. It's always been a happy thing to be able to see the stars. I went years without glasses, and my first thing when I got glasses, I, the first thing I do, I would stay out all night and stare at the out, stare at the stars. And there is a lot of sparkle going in there, so I can see where you are associating that with the night sky. But one of the other things that it's good for, it's it's good for opening up your psychic abilities. It's good for learning. It's good for patience. It it overall is a wonderful stone for. If you're trying to learn something and maintain creativity, it's also known as the stone of ambition. So if you lack motivation, or it, it's just one of those go-to stones where if you want to get something done, this is a great stone just to get started. Now, do you prefer to just have tumbled stones, or do you like that in jewelry? How do you work with it? Do you just carry it in your pocket? Tell us a little more what you do with it. Well, right now, I have it at home. It's in an arrangement with other stones so they work together. Uh, but normally I carry it around with me and I set it out in the sun when I'm hanging out in the sun and I treat it like a friend. I know you, you really talk a lot about it. Um, you're I always do. You're always asking me if I have any new specimens to, of it to look at. <laughs> you're really intrigued with it and it is a very pretty stone. Um, we all have our favorites. Uh, what's another one of your favorites? Let's see. Another one of my favorites is rose quartz. Right here? Yep. Yeah. It's one of my favorite stones because it promotes self-love and everybody has just a little bit of self-loathing in themselves that 
could easily be done away with if, with some self-esteem and some self-confidence. And rose quartz is one of those stones that promotes self-love and self-esteem, and it's it's a stone for love. I and find I find it's also a very peaceful stone. If you're trying to generate some peace in your workplace, on your desk, or even in your home, I find that it has a nice, uh, easygoing pulse, if you will. Mm -hmm. The vibe is nice, and uh, it promotes peace as well. Uh, rose quartz is sought after. I see it in jewelry, pendants, rings, earrings, necklaces, um, balls, big chunks of it, little tumbled stones Usually of it. Usually shaped like hearts, too. Yes. And a lot of people are attracted to it for its love qualities. But it's just not like love of a relationship. It's not to help uh, Susie find Johnny for a relationship. It's self-love. It's loving yourself, respecting yourself. Um, if you love yourself, you'll take good care of yourself. You'll respect yourself. So in a sense, it can also promote healing because if you're taking really good care of yourself, chances are you'll be okay. With all society taking on this people must be perfect attitude, it's nice to know that there's a stone that can help you look in inward and find out that you are a good person. Absolutely. Self-love is very important. Self-love is very important. And rose quartz is extremely popular for that reason. And it's pretty, pretty in pink. Well, one of my, my favorites is sodalite. Sodalite? And I got a big tower of it here. <laughs> um, so to light, it looks like marble. It almost it, looks like a storm. <laughs> it's got the blue in it um, and the uh, white. I like so to light because it helps promote peace, meditation, tranquility, and communication. When people have a problem talking in public or speaking the truth, I find that working with sodalite will encourage you to feel peaceful and calm with yourself, to express yourself better. So it rules the throat chakra, not that I'm getting into the chakras today, but it does help with communication, meditation, and it's a really good stone for people that get stressed out in public anxiety. Have you ever been in line at a cash register around the holiday season and you can't take it because there's too many people in line. This is a good stone to carry on you. Rub it. Relax. It's great for stress, except for, especially with, due to anxiety. But I find it to be a very peaceful stone and helps with communication. So this is definitely one of my favorites. Now, you can't go wrong at all with clear quartz, my goodness, and there's no. an abundance of it. I have a nice uh, prism here. I have a nice crystal ball here. Uh, clear quartz is really good to amplify energy. It's going to absorb negativity. And I like to gaze in them, too. Although scrying is not so much of a, a healing thing, but it can be used for scrying as well. I find if you're lacking, lazy, or need that oomph of energy, some uh, clear quartz crystals, carry them with you, hold them against you, or put them in the center of a living room to amplify and promote yourself with some positive energy. So clear quartz across the board wins. It's good for everything. Now, I know you were talking to me earlier today about fluorite. You had mentioned it looks like sea glass. It does. It comes in purple and green. And it's mixed together. It just looks like a beautiful piece of sea glass to me. And then you have a ball of it with you today. I do. If you want to hold that up. Now, the thing about um, hold it flat in your palm and maybe they can zero in. I call it zero in. Zoom in. <laughs> <laughs> Fluorite is really good for balancing one's emotions. Um, if you are up and down like a roller coaster, bipolar, manic depressant, teenage mood swings, maybe monthly issues, this helps stabilize your mood swings and control your emotions. This is a very good stone to give teenagers. Absolutely. They're going through a lot of changes and a lot of mood swings. 
and it can help ground them a bit. And it's also attractive in color, so they would be attracted to it and they would want to use it. Mm. So fluorite is definitely something that uh, is a good stone to work with. Now, if you're into gardening and inviting the fairies in your garden, it's a good stone too for that. So amethyst across the board is a good healing stone. Amethyst. Amethyst, and we have a ball and we have a big point. Amethyst is really good at fighting addictions, um, overcoming obstacles when it comes to illness. It's a generally considered a healing stone, uh, specifically trying to quit a bad habit like cutting down on drinking, alcoholism. If you're trying to quit smoking, this might be a good stone to work with. Um, it's gonna help you break that addiction, but it's also very spiritually connected. It's going to open up your third eye. It's going to help boost your psychic ability and it will help you if you're doing any forms of divination or um, meditation. It will help you open your third eye and gain insight. And that's why I nickname it one of the psychic stones. Mm. So many people are attracted to amethyst. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous color. Have you worked much with amethyst? I haven't been able to work with much with amethysts, but it is one of the stone, stones that have drawn me into crystals. Oh yeah, they kind of pull you in. It's, it's just a beautiful color and it looks so radiant. Now I see you brought a piece of selenite with you that is carved into a tea light holder. Yes. Because we didn't have a big chunk to bring. But tell us a little bit about selenite, if you would. Well, selenite is one of those stones that it cleans other, it cleanses other stones. And it, it's, having it in a candle holder shape is great because you can actually put the stones inside of it overnight. And it helps cleanse the stones. It's generally a stone that it doesn't absorb negativity. It does not need cleansing itself. And don't get it wet. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> like water. We no, know that. <laughs> it doesn't like water. It melts. <laughs> now, I've seen a lot of Reiki practitioners and massage therapists have selenite in the room that they're providing their services because it cleanses the aura hmm. and helps create sacred space. So I also have a slab of it that I use for healing. And if somebody comes to me and they're out of sorts and wants to crystal healing, I will have them hold the slab of selenite for a few minutes before we do any work. And I also do charge my other crystals on a bed of selenite. And I do like the fact that it creates sacred space. It cleanses the aura and it cleanses the other stones. So it's a, it's a go-to stone. You need to have that on hand. Definitely. So I, uh, I made some notes because there are key points that I want to tell the audience about. Um, and we're going to talk about that right now. Um, you need a restful night's sleep. Do you have problems staying up all night? Do you toss and turn? Maybe you need a good night's sleep. How about some moonstone? We have a little. We do have moonstone. We have some tumbles we brought in today. It looks almost like white tiger's eye. Not, well, that is um, in the quartz family, and that's moonstone. And this, sleeping with this under your pillow will help you get a good night's sleep. It'll also probably amplify your dreams, too. Um, it's also used a lot for fertility issues and regulating mm -hmm. the monthly menses. So if you're having problems uh, attaining fertility, or regulating your menses, this might be a good stone for women to work with. Uh, again, it's one of the psychic stones, um, a moonstone. I use it, I have a ball at home that I specifically use for scrying, and it's used a lot as a sleep aid, a moonstone. And moonstone jewelry is gorgeous. It, it has that sheen on it. A lot of people like moonstone. Well, a lot of things that associate with the moon have psychic abilities. Oh, absolutely. And it's for fertility as well. Yes, that is a very <laughs> important point to this. Um, we have some uh, green aventurine. I think you brought one of those with us. Yes, I did. And that's good for general healing. And it also rules the heart chakra. 
Um, if you feel insecure, like there's a lot of enemies around you, and you feel like nothing is going your way, this would be a good stone to be working with because it's going to um, boost your self-esteem, believe in yourself, and you're going to focus on things that are of importance and avoid gossip. So that's a mm. really good stone. I like to think that adventuring is good for starting out on brand new adventures. Absolutely. Hence the word adventuring. Unikite. Um, we have a tumbled stone. And if you want to hold that up in a nice sure. flat palm. This is a really good stone for anyone that is grieving or trying to let go of the past. Now, it is sad that, you know, your relationship has come to an end or perhaps a relative has passed away. But this stone helps us to let go of the past and embrace the future. This is a really good stone for grieving. So if you find yourself always saddened, always stuck, and always grieving and longing for yesterday, and you can't um, facilitate or promote the future, carrying this on you will let you come to terms with the past so you can look forward to tomorrow. Unikai, I nicknamed it the grieving stone because it's, you know, sad to say, but sometimes people need to push. You need to get over it and you need to move on. Let go of the past and embrace the future. Unikite. It's always good to have something to help you get through the grieving process. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, the things with stones and jewelry, you just don't purchase them and stick them on a bureau somewhere. Wear them, touch them, rub them, sleep with them under your pillow. I think they're great. And you know what? Any of these stones, they want to come out, touch, rub them in your fingers. Now, um, headaches are a common uh, problem that people have. We're talking about physical um, illnesses. Um, amethyst is really good for headaches. Mm. If you could lay down on a couch, you could put a piece of amethyst on your third eye, or you could lay several amethyst stones around your head, and usually within 15 minutes of meditating with the amethyst around you, your headache will be absorbed. Really? Disappear. Yes, I dare you to try it. <laughs> it's worked for me. It Might can take work you up on you. that. Now, you were experiencing some um, discomfort not too long ago when there was a stone that you went to grab. Mm. Well, what stone was that? I went to grab Moonstone. I, was, I had cramps. It was uh -huh. terrible. So again, with the female um, issues. And you grabbed your I Moonstone. I put it in stones. my pocket, and it went away. It, it did go away. It went, I felt so much better afterwards. It took a little while, but it felt so much better. Now, I didn't bring any malachite with me today. Um, malachite is a beautiful green stone. That's really good to apply to the sore knee, the tennis elbow, an arthritic area. It's really good for physical pain. And I always tell people, you know, to work with the crystals, sit down, lay down, put the stone right where the pain is. If it's on your knee, apply the stone there, hold it with your hand, concentrate on your breathing and let the stone do its magic and that will promote healing. I use malachite all the time for pain because a lot of people that want a healing stone, it's usually from an ache or a pain <laughs> and there's so many different types of healing. There's the emotional healing, the grieving, the depression, but also physical pain. So, let's see what else we have. I did make some notes, because there was things I definitely wanted to talk about. Oh, garnet. We got some garnets we, we brought. It's really hard to see these. They're very dark in color, but when you hold them up to the light, they're gorgeous. And we brought some garnets with us today, because they help uh, cleanse the blood, the heart, and the lungs. So if you're having some health issues, and you're trying to detoxify, and you're trying to cleanse your organs, this would be a great stone to carry with you. Um, I bring stones to people that are in the hospital all the time. And sometimes they'll um, let me lay them on them, and other times it's just on their nightstand, but they know it's there and they'll take it every once in a while and uh, rub it or carry it on them. 
And, you know, if they want to just think that it's for good luck, so be it. You know, good luck will help heal us too. So these are just a few of the stones. Let's see what else we have here. Here you go. Ooh, tiger's eye. Oh, we do have tiger's eye. Oh, we have some big ones. Tiger's eye, if you want to. Everybody loves tiger's eye. Well, you know, not so much for a healing quality. My favorite reason for using tiger's eye, it's the stone of truth. Um, if you feel that you're gullible or you um, tend to have people lying to you all the time, carrying tiger's eye with you will help you see what is the truth and what is a lie. I call it Mother Nature's lie detector. And if you carry a lot of tiger's eye on you, you're probably not going to believe people's lies. You'll be so, able to see through them So quite a bit next better. time the door-to-door -door salesman rings your doorbell, <laughs> carry a piece of tiger's eye with you. <laughs> Mother Nature's <laughs> lie detector. It's great for the throat, and it dissolves... Um, it helps dissolve um, constrictions and any blockages that you have. And it's just such a pretty stone, too. But it I is. call that, I nickname that Mother Nature's <laughs> lie detector. Now, a stone that I should be working with, my doctor would like me to work with this stone and, of course, go on a diet as well. This will help <laughs> speed up your <laughs> metabolism. This is carnelian. Carnelian is a beautiful orange color. And this helps um, with your metabolism. But on a spiritual level, I use this stone uh, for children that have night terrors, waking up a lot during the night, having negative dreams. I tell the child to put that under their bed or in their pillow. And carnelian is the stone that will drive away the nightmares. And it's a good stone that they're, they uh, are pulled to. Nine times out of 10, if I see a child playing with carnelian, I usually find out from their parents that they have a sleeping disorder or they have night terrors. So it's a pretty good, good stone. It's also, because of its orange color, it's a good stone that works with other stones to attract things. If you're trying to attract money, love, um, good well-being, you'd work with carnelian in conjunction with other stones to attract that goal. Hmm. And I wanted to talk a little bit about um, if you don't want to carry a crystal on you or you don't have um, the jewelry, but you still want the benefits of healing your home, your office, yourself, or creating a nice atmosphere, we could talk about crystal grids. So I noticed that you had a, in t today you had an idea for a crystal grid, and I brought a little cheat sheet. And the internet's loaded with these. This is just a simple wheel um, and this is a, a plain grid. And when you're making a grid, whether it be for abundance, love, healing, overcoming an obstacle, when you laid the crystals down, you have a specific intention. Now, you don't have to actually use the printout, but I think they're handy when we're starting out. So why don't you show us the crystal grid that you came up with and what your intention is for it. So I'm going to lay this right here on the table. And if you can start building your crystal grid. Well, I start with amethyst, amethyst in the middle. Amethyst in the middle. And what is your amethyst in the middle for? The amethyst in the middle is to promote healing. Okay. Thing, generally, the idea behind this crystal grid is to promote self-healing and self-love. So we have the rose quartz for the self-love, and then we have amethyst for healing. Because if you've tortured yourself for quite a while, sometimes it's hard to get that healing in. Now... Those are uh, terminated crystals. And they point towards the small stones. And where do you set up a crystal grid? Well, you can set them up in various places, but um, I, for one, have seen it set up under a chair. Yes. That's why this is pointed, and it goes, it points the energy upwards. Correct. 
Now we have the stones for self-healing, and we have the stones for self-love, and it's all channeling up, upwards to basically spread the energy and help to heal yourself. So I could put this underneath my chair and do a meditation and feel the healing energy of the stones coming through me. Yes. Um, you can also set this up on a coffee table in your living room. Um, if you're trying to create peace, um, honest communication, it all depends on the stones you use and your intention when you're putting it together. Um, I know one of the crystal grids we did together was for self-love and respecting yourself, and we used a lot of rose quartz. And um, a lot of people could feel it by sitting with it underneath their chair. And there is no a limit on the style or how many grids you can have going in your home. You can make all kinds of grids. Um, sometimes, though, the stone or crystal picks you. You don't pick it. It'll just naturally be... Um, attracted to it. If setting up a big grid like this is too much work for you, um, which I think is beautiful, thank you very much, Amanda. You're welcome. And you can make a little mojo bag, and you just put different stones in it for a different purpose. I have a pink stone of rhodonite in here, and that's good for love. I have tiger's eye in here for protection and strength. And truth. <laughs> and truth. I have a red jasper to ward off negativity. I have green aventurine for the heart chakra and um, believing in yourself. Sodalite for stress and for honest communication. And amethyst, of course, for overall healing. And you would assemble these stones and you can put them in a little bag and you can put this on your coffee table. Uh, women like to keep this in their purse. I've seen women stick these in their bra. And you can also take them out and rub them occasionally. So it's good to hold them close to your heart. Yes, feel that little bag. That's what I call a harmonious mojo bag. Well, listen, we're... You can feel how nice it is. Crystals are nice to play with, and they're useful. So I hope that this show encourages people to uh, look a little deeper than just a pretty stone. Listen, we're already out of time. I want to thank Amanda Babin so much for coming on today. Oh, anytime. It was and, wonderful. And discussing the healing powers of crystal. And this is the Celtic Cricket reminding you to live out your dreams and celebrate your spirit. Thanks for watching. <laughs>